Welcome everybody to another episode of Off Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Akeem Mitchell, with the man with the plan, Trayvon Barnes. And we got a special guest. We have uh, Trayvon's uh, agent from One Motor Sports, Drew Kelso. Drew, say what's up to the people. Hey, what's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? <laughs> so, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this gonna be this gonna be the same concept with different little twists. So you know we're doing the craziest stories. So we definitely want to hear uh, Drew's you know craziest stories of being an agent, uh, especially with one more mo- one motive is a kind of a newer agency, correct? We've been open uh, right about two and a half years. We started in November of 2018, so it's still fairly new. Uh, two and a half years, but it feels like we've been doing it for about 25 some days. So. Uh, <laughs> And it's a lot of stories, a lot of uh, good times, bad times. It's just life, you know. I mean, you deal with a lot of – we've helped a lot of guys out and seen trials and tribulations for sure. So so my two main questions, right? The first one is a lot of, like, I guess you can say ex-hoopers or people that, you know, might have played in college but didn't have the best numbers – and don't really know how to find the agent or get an agent to be on board with them. Like, they're always asking me, like, yo, what did you do to get an agent? I mean, for me, I played all four years of college. So that's why it's like, you know, I did well in college. I had camp after I did well. So it wasn't hard for me to find an agent. But a lot of people are like, yo, how do I find an agent? How do I get overseas? Right. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, the, the obvious answer is, you know, guys like you and Trey, like, you had the resumes to back it up. You know, you, you played at Division One. You know, you had good numbers. Um, obviously, look, I mean, especially in today's day and age, like if you're coming from a D1, okay, well, and yesterday, today and age, this year, everybody's hitting the portal and going back to school. Like it's <laughs> the hottest night in South Beach. But, um, <laughs> you know, everybody else, like, you know, let's say last year even, like if you averaging – or say it's crazy, but like you average seven, eight points a game in D1, you know, I mean, you got 10, 15 agents probably getting at you, especially if you're big. Trey, how many, how many agents did you have come calling at the end of your senior year? It was probably around, I said around about eight to 10. Yeah, see, point proven. Like, so that's like, and imagine coming from a, a power five or anything like that and, and putting up numbers like that. Then you got everybody hitting you up. So um, obviously that's first and foremost, if you got the resume, there's probably going to be somebody that finds you um, in this instance that you don't, right? Um, you know, obviously first and foremost, you need to be informed. There's so many scammers and so much stuff going on in that, in that realm of the world. You know, I mean, all these Facebook groups and all this stuff, all, you know, I guess I'm not gonna say no names, but there's like this Instagram that posts all these job openings and all this stuff. And everybody, everybody in the know knows the scam. Like they, they posting job openings now in there ain't no leagues open now, not in Europe. Like, and they still post the openings. I'm getting hit up about it. Like, it's crazy. So I just, just inform yourself as much as you can. I mean, go to FIBA, like, you know, get your resume ready. Don't just send an agent a highlight film and think that's going to get you, get you on like that. We get that. We probably get 10 to 15 a day. Like, whether it be emails, like some of them are like well thought out resumes, like, and then some of them like, yo, I played at this record. Like, I'm in this men's league, and I was this. And, and you send the highlight. I'm a five nine combo guard. Check out my highlight tape. And it's like, no, I mean, it's just, you know, at least be more thought. If you if you're that, there's nothing wrong with that. But be more thought out about it. Like, be more professional about it. this. Is a profession. This is what I do to make a living. This is what Trey does to make a living. What you do to make a living. So like, at the end of the day, like you got to come at it like that. You know, and we we host, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and say it's the greatest thing in the world. But one thing we try to do is we do host exposure camps, you know, and uh, and I think we try to come at it in a genuine way. There's a lot of them, you know, Eurobasket, um, ours, you know, Coast to Coast. There's a lot of them. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, do you do your homework on those and know anybody that's promising you anything out of those combines is is lying to you. Um you know, but one thing we do is, you know, it's not a cash grab. It's a pretty cut, like pretty basic entry fee. Get you some film, 
put you up against like new like good competition. You know, you're gonna get sent out to all these different outlets of coaches, agents, GM, stuff like that. So like put yourself in position to be seen. That's why I tell guys that especially if you got a gap, you know, you got that more than a one, two year gap, like you're already swimming upstream. Yeah. So like put yourself in a position to be able to go and get those types of we've taken guys with gaps before. We just just signed one from camp that had a year gap and you know had a and he had a good agent and you know I, I believe him he's a good player. You know, and so I mean there's situations like that that happen all the time, especially with COVID, like you have to promote yourself in a way that is visible, you know, and, and is is good. You can't just assume that because you're dropping 30 in a men's league that somebody's going to come and find you. Like, it's just, it's not going to happen. All right. So <laughs> what's one, <laughs> I know you got like a video that you saw and you were just like, yo, what on earth? <laughs> <laughs> Man, y'all going to me in trouble. I got it one other day. So well, we, we eventually want to get in and represent women players, right? Like we want to get it like, in that side, but that, we're not there yet. Like we haven't, like we're trying to get into like one segment at a time. Like we're growing like crazy, but like we're trying to get, you know, our ducks in a row on the men's side first. So I got this thing of this girl the other day, man. It was like the blurriest. Like I know I, I got I'm old school. I got like an iPhone seven. Like I I got an upgrade, but like she was she had to be on a flip phone or something. <laughs> <laughs> and like sweatpants and like some like. She was in the room doing pocket passing against the wall. Like, I'm talking, like, between the leg pass, like, behind the back. And, like, basically broke down, like, oh, my God. I wish I could pull it up. I'm not going to do that to her, but, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> you got to send that to us. You got to send that our way. <laughs> it was, man, and not shooting down nobody's dream, but it was, like, the most comprehensive breakdown of, like, pay of, like, EuroLeague level guy players and she was comparing herself to them and, like, percentage. Like, she had analytics down to a T. But everything she sent, and then she sent another one, like, her shooting at the park. And it was just, it was, uh, it was crazy, bro. We, we had to send that one amongst ourselves as a staff and just go, yo, like, we're, we're doing things the wrong way. <laughs> that one, I've, I've got a lot of them, man. I've gotten, and I've gotten ones from, like, dudes literally shooting in the driveway like it, it's it's crazy man it's crazy it's, I, we get a lot of stuff like that i mean hey if, if that's what if that's your angle to do it you can get it get it man but please don't send me no picture you shooting in the driveway with no stats or nothing <laughs> <laughs> all right so we know what not to do everybody watching do not do that <laughs> I, I, I could pass and like doing like like literally she, she had like a a place on the wall like marked and she was throwing behind the back passes like homework basketball type stuff and like hitting it on the wall and I was like oh my god this girl is really trying to get a job off this so <laughs> <laughs> so hey that was uh, hey you made my day though for sure sometimes I feel like it's sort of disrespectful that people feel like it's that easy just to get a job overseas like you can send out anything or you can just have any type of resume and it's just you know it's just gonna ha happen but, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I understand everyone doesn't understand like this, but we actually put work into that. So it's all good, though. No, nah, I mean, y'all are two prime examples. Y'all both y'all both had good college careers at, at a respected university, and, like, it's not been 100% easy for y'all. You know, it's, it's – it's, you know, and, and you see guys that are even higher – higher level that are without jobs, especially this year. Like, this year there's a lot of – like, a lot of very, very talented players at the house, you know what I mean? And, and, or playing in whatever league they can to just stay relevant, you know? And um, just because you can play, man, it doesn't, you know, I always, what I always say to y'all, Trey, is it's more to being a pro than what goes in between those lines, you know? And sure. how you yourself, how you, how you portray yourself on social media, all of that, this stuff matters, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm getting off subject, but yeah, no, nah, I mean, it's definitely – I think I, you used to crack me up with the videos when you was at the, you was talking about the, you were dunking on the little kids and stuff. <laughs> some people really, uh, like, people really do think stuff like that. And then you got people on the complete opposite end where everybody overseas is making six figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the perception that we paint on IG and all this stuff. And, and you know, I, I don't knock nobody. Like, no matter if you're making 500 a month or 500, like 50,000 a month, it doesn't, 
you still like to be able to play overseas and get paid for it. You got to be very exceptional, like period. Like it's a very rare. That's not something that's easy to be done. You know? For me personally, like you were saying, like it was, it hasn't been easy for me or Trey. For me, I got to go play my rookie year in Romania, and uh, you know honorable mentions. You know the youngest player on that list, all of that stuff. I had a really good year, and then to come back during COVID and not be able to go play, that was really rough for me this past year. But then vice versa for Trey, he's coming right out of college and he has his first major injury that he's never experienced the injury before. But then to be able to, to sit out that entire year and then to come back and bounce back and have such an amazing year that he had, you know what I mean? Like it's not an easy road at all. But uh, a lot of people do not know what goes on outside of the lines. And to actually live out overseas for such a long time away from family and like it's a mental ground more than it is just a physical, like you, it takes a lot. To me, like we started in 2018. I didn't play overseas. I played in college. Um, you know, I got friends that played in the league, oh, Euro League, uh, and everything in between. You know, and um, you know, the first year we started, we really didn't have a lot of guys playing. Like we had a couple guys that were playing. Like we were recruiting trade. Like we didn't have much of anything going on to be real. Like you know, and, and that was probably one of the reasons he didn't go with us. Like now I don't blame him. Like we didn't have a lot going on, and like we got some guys. Like you know the way. You know, one reason I think we got Trey was we had Trey Moses. You know, I still to this day ask Trey Moses why in the world he signed with us because he was a big time for us. Like, you know, so, like, we had to start out slow in that first year. And then the next year, so last season, we had 37 guys when COVID hit overseas mm -hmm. in 26 countries. And so the, our first full year overseas got cut short. Like, we didn't have the full year. I'm talking like August to May type year, June even, really. We still got guys that are going to be playing until June. This is the first full year I've had guys over there the whole year. And you want to talk about like mentally, physically draining them and me? Like it's it's crazy. It's, you know, and, and the crazy thing is like 90, we got 55 guys, like 90% of them are 25 and younger. So like this is a lot of their first year overseas the whole year. So yeah. like they're going through it. And then they, when they go through it, I feel them, but it puts me through it too, you know, and it's just, it's a group effort. And, you know, everybody talks about the, the physical side of it. Yeah. That's, that's the, probably the biggest part more so than anything is the mental, like staying focused. You know, I was talking to one of my best friends the other day, he's playing BTB, you know, high level. He played BBL Germany, Champions League, Europe Cup, all this stuff. And I said, does it ever get easier? Like April, May, you know, he's like, it always sucks, but, like, you just get more used to it as time goes. You know what I mean? You get more used to it. Like, that's the the grind of it, you know? So, I, I call it the dog days of spring, man, because it is here. I'm ready for all our dudes. I hope they finish well, the ones that are over there listening. But I'm ready for y'all to get home, for sure. I'm ready to start over. <laughs> Prison. Yeah, my brother, he's in Israel right now. And I know even him, like, this might be his eighth year overseas. But he's like, bro, it never gets easier. Like, I'm just so ready to come home. But he actually took a job last summer around, like, May. And then she went there, came back for maybe a month, and then went back overseas, back over to Israel. Been playing for that entire year. So now this is, like, his first time having, like, a whole year overseas. So he'll be done, I think, end of May. So maybe, like, two and a half, three more weeks left. But when I tell you, he's like, man, I'm tired of FaceTiming people. I, I just got to suffer through this one because I'm so ready to come back home. Oh, I, I think it was uh, it was Two Holloway um, that played Xavier back in the day, and he's been overseas a long time. He came out with that tweet, uh, you know, when Paul George and then was complaining about the bubble, mm -hmm. you know, and he was talking about, you know, you talk about living in a bubble with everything at your at your fingertips, you know, in the NBA for what three, four months, whatever they did it for. Yeah, and he was like, try living in a bubble for a time when you don't know nobody, you can't speak the language, you don't know what food you're ordering. You know, you, you sit there and you wait nine months for them two months and think about them two months that you can get home. Like, that's yeah. a real thing. Like, dude, really? Like, I, I got guys that are envisioning being at home. And then, like, even Trey said it before we got on. Like, it's cool being home, but it gets boring after a while. You know, it's, it's cool to be around. And, and I get it. And, like, I know it's, it's just – I think it's just one of those deals. Like, even, like you said with your brother, like, it never gets easier. Like, it, it – just get more used to it. You know, and I think that's kind of something guys don't think about. I think some guys are cut out for it more than others. And I think, you know, 
the, the seasons are so long. And honestly, I do wish that the seasons were a little shorter sometimes, but it is it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. The circle, uh, the circle back to uh, earlier when you were talking about how you guys started up and they had so much going on. Uh, I feel like that's a good talking point for the fact for a lot of people that uh, when they about choosing agents, I know people hit me up asking like, uh, do they know this agent? You know, what, uh, how did you choose your agent and everything? But the biggest uh, reason why I, after my injury, uh, that I, I really wanted to sound you guys is that you, uh, you you gave up that genuine vibe. You actually seemed like a person actually took uh, took the phone call and, uh, and the whole interview process would be at everything like, you know, for, for, uh, for real. Like you just, you didn't look at me as just like a number. Like you actually saw me as someone that could help your organization move along. And obviously you saw that you could help my career move along. And the, the guy that I did sign with, he just saw me as a, a number, just a commissioner. And that obviously didn't work out. You know, anyone that's seen this channel saw how that, that thing went down. But, uh, and then when I actually did get over there uh, in Bulgaria with uh, Trey Moses, it was crazy to me that uh, I went with the guy, you know, that was more established and everything. And I'll end up in the same exact team uh, as he did, and he signed with Shoe for less money. So it's like all that stuff really didn't matter at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it's it's just one of the deals, man. You got It's like, you know, I try to tell people all the time, like it's like we're getting recruited in college all over again, you know. And, and you can go with a big time agent, and you know, one thing I always hear is, you know, like when we're recruiting, is like, okay, they got this guy, this NBA guy, they got this NBA guy. You know, you don't have any NBA guys. And I'm like, okay, well, in reality, do you think you're an NBA guy? And they're like, no. I was like, okay, then what difference does it make? Like, that, that has to do with you. Like, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, his own. Uh, for us, man, like, I always, and my partner, Thomas, like, we always set out, like, that we were just not going to be, like, everybody else. One thing is because we didn't really know what everybody else really was, except, you know, Jerry Maguire and Don Pagnotti on He Got Game and, and all of that stuff. That, that was agents to us and what we saw on TV. Yeah. We just came in naive and, like, it's a long story how we got here, but, like, you know, for us, it was more about, you know, just being genuine people, just, like, really helping out and, and you know, and, and we've done deals for... <laughs> couple hundred dollars a month that we've done big deals you know or bigger deals you know so like the, the biggest thing with us was just I never wanted anybody to feel like it was just like a transactional relationship you know like if it's just there's only and, and sorry you and I can talk about this like how many times we talked about stuff other than basketball you know and, and there's only so much business that you can talk about at the end of the day like that, like if, if you just want if you just want that then fine go sign with somebody big time and, and, and you you keep it with them and if you and you gotta go with the right fit for you if you want somebody that's strictly gonna get you paid and gonna you know that you're not gonna have no relationship with them by all means that's that's the shoe you know but like for us like we picked a lot of diamonds in the rough like we got a lot of guys that and a lot of guys that need so we got some guys that need to talk to every day and then I got some guys, I always try, you know, try to contest this. Like, we at least want to talk to guys once or twice a week, you know, just to check in with them, see how they're doing, you know. And then we OD on social media with just, it's not for us, it's, it's for them and trying to get their name out there more. So, like, you know, I had an agent, I'll, I'll end it with this. Like, I had an agent one time tell me he was somebody I really respected, very high up NBA level guys. Um, he tell me, you know, you can never be friends with your client. And I just kind of looked at him and I was like, for what? Then he said, you know, the, the moment that you start doing that, you start talking to them about family and, you know, you start talking to them about their personal lives or that you do anything like outside of, you know, because like I have got my house, like people come to my house all the time, you know, or they'll come here and work out for a couple of days and leave and go out to eat with me and my wife or, you know, we'll go grab a drink or whatever, you know. And, um, you know, and he said, the moment that you start doing that, like, they'll they'll walk all over you and um, in my in my point of view it's like that's a soft way of looking at it. because like if you don't believe in yourself enough of what you're doing and the relationship that you build with that person then you're just scared of getting fired and then you you make it strictly transactional like i said to each his own but that's not how we're gonna operate so i think that's just something that you know and, and it's time consuming like i said i i, I I definitely do a lot of uh, a lot of social work um, with guys and trying to get all that done. But 
you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy getting to know guys. And, you know, even we've had some guys that, you know, stepped away from the game altogether and like, I still keep up with them, you know, so that's a, that's gonna be fun. And then when all you guys get old, Trey, it'll be fun, like seeing what y'all are doing, you know, 10 years from now. So what do you think is the best way to take that, like that first step of becoming an agent? You know what? The funny thing is, is like, there's really no right or wrong way. I always say this since morning, but like, there's no right or wrong way to be an agent, like, or doing the business. It's like the only right or wrong way is just like treat people the right way. I don't really have a, like, like I said, it's a long story, but like, man, we just dove in, like just dove in. I had no idea what the hell we were doing. Like we just really got into it. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I was, you can go to sports management, you can law degree, whatever, but like nothing, you can, you can talk to Trey and this is another story, but like, if you want to get on this side of the business and the international side, like nothing can prepare you for dealing with some GM <laughs> that's going to try to shice your guy, shice you on some money that's not even that relevant. Like it's like not even that much money, you know, or there's nothing that's going to prepare you for that call at 3.30 in the morning, like the world's going to explode and, you know, can you come help me? Like, you know, that, that's just something you got to learn on your own. Like, and you can handle it one or two ways. Either you can run from it or you can embrace it and, and take care of your people. And that's what I've always tried to do. So um, that, that it, it's, it's, there's no rhyme or wrong, right or wrong reason, you know, just learning and, and researching. And, you know, when I first came in, I didn't know anything about the different leagues. Like I didn't really, I mean, I knew the main ones was Spain, Italy, you know, Germany, stuff like that, Euroleague. But I didn't really know like about Bulgaria or Romania or, or Kosovo or, or Austria. I didn't, I didn't know the difference. Like it was all overseas to me. So I just, that's something I had to learn. That's up for a lot of things. So personally, I'm already liking how you're talking with just uh, building relationships is more important than just talking about business all the time. I completely agree because those relationships will take you a lot farther. And like life is more than just business anyway. It's never just about the business. Like building relationships, I think is always the more, most important thing. 100%. If you're ever going to do anything, you just got to dive head first into it. Just figure it out on your way. And, and I don't know. And I don't know if I would recommend that way personally, you know, for most, <laughs> you know, I mean, I wish I would have took a year to like really study stuff out before I'm like, you know what, I'm going to sell the business that I had and uh, just go ahead and do this. And, and you know, you know what, we're going to eventually, we're going to make, we're going to make money. Give us, give us a year, we'll make money. And then the first year, like we didn't have anybody overseas. I had like a couple guys go for like a couple months and like, it was not, it wasn't paying my bills. I'll say that much. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it, it's been a struggle. It, it's been like, everybody sees, you know, we got all these dudes doing all this stuff and like playing well. And we got guys that are like really building, but they don't know like the, the 14 to 16 hour work days that come behind it every day. You know, the one thing Trey will tell you is that, you know, he takes me at 4.35 o'clock in the morning and I'm up. You know, and I have to be yeah, that's right. uh, that I have to do. Like, I, I, I got to be up. And I might go to bed at 10 o'clock, but I, I'm up at 430, you know, and, and people don't see that. You know, people think, you know, they the glitz and the glamour of, and Jerry Maguire is showing the money. No, it's not. It's not how this works. Like, maybe if you know a, a lottery pick and as your first client, like Rich Paul, like, OK, yeah, it might it might work that way. You know, he earned every bit of what he got after that. You know, but um, yeah, man, there's no rhyme or wrong, right or wrong way to do it. It ain't gonna be easy. Ain't nothing gonna be easy. Man, it, it, it definitely ain't easy. That's for sure. I feel like we gave you enough time now that you can give us at least one crazy story. <laughs> then again, two, two years, two and a half years, you got a crazy story that you're just like, yo, I have to share this. About a player, about a coach, about a genius. What you what you want, man? Trey, what what what, what you want, man? What you want, Trey? What you want, Trey? What you want? You know, Trey? I would I would like a GM story, but maybe a player story uh might be better. Cause the GM story, I don't know. GMs be wild. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> GMs be crazy. But a player yeah. story might be even crazier though. Now think about it. All right, I got a I got a story about a player, man. And and I'm not gonna say no names or where it was at or anything like that. So I got, I had a, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate for, for mental health, but this is like, this is something that I, I struggle with because I didn't know what to do. Mm. So it was last year. We had a dude, we had two dudes on the same team and he played his, they were both rookies, right? In a safe, cool country, everything's taken care of, lower league, you know, all this stuff. 
and they go to play their first game. And, you know, the kid plays terrific. He has, like, 25 points, 21 rebounds, like, four steals, like, crazy numbers. It's a game winner. And everybody comes back in the locker room and they're celebrating and all this stuff. And the dude stands still. And they're like, you know, now I'm hearing this from the coach. Like the coach is telling me this. Me and my, play, my other play. And they they looked at him and they're like, you know, what's up? And they're like, man, just see a dude that was following me? And they're like, what do you mean the dude that was following you? And he was like, do you mean like the dude that was following you on social media? He's like, nah, it, the, the dude that was following me. He's like, the dude that was guarding you? He said, nah, the guy that was in the black leather jacket that was, you know, in the corner every time that I – I was there. He was on the baseline and just watching me and following me all over the court. Bro, there was like, they, I watched the film. There was like 10 people at the game. Like, there was no one there. And like, whatever was in his mind, like, he was just so set on that somebody was there following him around the court. And like, and then like, he told him, he was like, that's why I was rebounding so hard. Is because like, I was just trying to get away from him. And I was like, they called and told me that, like, it's not funny, but it's just crazy. Like, this is the type of stuff that you deal with that you don't expect. But, like, he legitimately thought people were, like, following him around the town and the city and, like, in the gym and everything. And, like, they called me, like, what do we do? And I'm like, oh, take him to, like, you got to see somebody. Like, I, don't, I don't know. So, anyway, like, crazy. Like, I feel bad for him. Like, bro, like, he legitimately is, like, like probably schizophrenic, like definitely thought. And like the, the coach asked me, he was like, do you think he would play better or worse if he thought somebody wasn't following him? I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> he said, do that's, we want to handle this funny. or do we want to actually help him? <laughs> oh, no. Nah. That's crazy. Like I told him, like, I'm like, yo, like, you know, when they, because they had eventually let him go. because it, it, it turned out to be like a series of events. And like, that's not funny, but like, this is like, if you want to be an agent, like, Anything can happen. Like, you don't know what you're going to – I always tell people my job is cut up into four pieces, right? You got 25% talent evaluator. I can tell that Trayvon's a good basketball player. He can play pro, right? That's one thing, right? 25% is placing him in that job, right? You got to place him in that spot. 25% is being a bill collector, which we all know about, right? You got to be a bill collector for yourself and your player. You got to be down doors to get their money. Oh, the other 25% is a social worker, like – you know, you're dealing with a lot of problems and a lot of issues, but like that one right there stuck out of my mind. Cause that's probably like one of the craziest calls I got was like, oh, this dude literally thinks somebody's following him. And I, I had to ask like five questions. I didn't know what it was. So I, you know, and I hope the best for him, but I'm like, yo, you gotta get, like, you gotta get help for sure um, before you try to play overseas. So, I mean, like I said, yeah, that's one um, GM story. Oh my God, I could talk about somebody trading that was really good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man, I, you know, the, the, the mindset of a guy, uh, a lot of these GMs overseas is like, you know, these people aren't human. Like, you know, the players that they're getting are strictly, it's, it's, call it for what it is, it's property. Like, they own you from the time you step off the plane and you play ball and you do really well and then we ship you back when the season's over. Hate to sound that way, but am I, I'm not lying. Trey. Like, that's how, how a lot of these people see you. Yeah. Like, that's it's not right, you know? And, you know, I remember I remember when, I ain't going to go into names, but I remember when somebody stepped off the plane for us one time and, like, they called immediately, like, hey, he's fat. You know, hey, he's this. Hey, he's, you know, he's on this medication for depression. Like, like we're ready to send him home. I'm like, like, what are y'all talking about? Like this and so like the GM like GMs, the moral of that story is like, and, and we eventually got all that sorted out the best we could and all of that. But like, man, these GMs, they don't care anything about you nine times out of ten. You find one that cares about you, you found a really good GM. You know, and that's what we try to strive for is finding the right fit for guys. But I mean, I got a lot of stories about GMs um, that I probably shouldn't say, <laughs> like, because, like, I'm trying to keep my job and uh, <laughs> don't circulate. But, like, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, Trey, Trey, 
Trey's got some stories for sure. And I mean, I remember him telling the story about his agent giving them the, the death threat and everything else. Like that's, there's a lot of agent stories out there too. Like, dude, these agents are crazy. I hope somebody don't tell me I'm crazy. You know, <laughs> yeah, man. There's uh, there's not a lot of crazy stories for sure, but um, yeah, that's definitely a couple. Like I said, you know, it, it it's it's just nothing that can compare you or prepare you for like what you're about to on the player side, the agent side. Like when you go over there for that first time. Or the second time, like there's nothing that can prepare you for it. Mm-hmm. Like you, you just really coming in out of water, you know, like a fish out of water, and you just gotta hopefully have an agent or somebody in your corner that that's preparing you. Thank you for your time today. We greatly, greatly appreciate you, everybody. Drew Kelso, One Motorsports. Send them in all your videos. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all everybody. Right. Our show for the day. Uh, off ball podcast, more to the game. Y'all know. Go ahead, Trey. You can run it. Thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of the Off Ball Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on the Anchor app, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll be back next week with more content.